Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to be talking about the uh, thesis process web page. So this is just going to be an overview of the thesis process page on our MES website. And if you have any questions about the thesis process, you know, I always want to stress that it is very important to reach out to us and reach out to your reader and communicate and let us know if there are any issues or questions or inconsistencies if it, feel, if it feels like there may be information that doesn't match. But this thesis process page, we really want it to be a go-to for you for your um, overall journey as you enter thesis land, as we call it. So I want to first and foremost welcome you actually to thesis land if you are just starting to embark on this journey, which is very special. It's a, a really unique experience that not a lot of folks get to um, really have um, as a professional or as a, an academic. Um, and uh, we're really excited for you to be able to explore your own personal independent research projects that you've chosen and to embark on this uh, wonderful working relationship with your, your faculty members, your readers, um, maybe you have technicians who are helping you or you're working with an organization or agency or maybe even your own job and this is uh, another way to further expand on, on that working relationship. So this can be a really rewarding experience in so many ways and it has so many milestones and, and learning opportunities within it. So. Uh, let's get started on just a, a brief overview of the thesis process web page. And we're just doing this just because we understand that everybody learns differently and receives information differently. So if it helps that to have someone explain it to you um, and to have a, a, a video outside of thesis workshop that is um, going through information, um, then uh, that can be uh, a little bit comforting for a lot of folks. I, I certainly feel that way. So if you're coming to the uh, MES webpage, and maybe you have landed on our homepage, right? Um, our homepage is uh, going to have a lot of, you know, good overview information about the program, but um, as a current student, uh, you're going to want to focus on this section of our sidebar. So the sidebar is going to have the thesis process page located at the bottom of the current student section of that sidebar. So when you click on it, it'll bring you to our thesis process page. Um, and here we have a, a general timeline is going to be the first thing that you see. So for a lot of our thesis students, uh, right now this video is being filmed in winter of 2021, you have already taken case studies and thesis design. So that's going to be the quarter where you are starting to curate your thesis topic. You have drafted your thesis prospectus during this quarter, started your literature review, or you know, you've got a, a really great draft of that literature review started. Um, and you have also been matched with your thesis advisor or thesis reader, as we often refer them, uh, to them as. And you have submitted that prospectus, right? Then in winter quarter, so this is where we are right now. So winter quarter is when students will typically start data collection and analysis. Um, and uh, oftentimes, you know, if you are receiving data from an agency or organization that you're working with, then winter quarter can be a quarter of just cleaning up data and running analysis. So that can take quite a lot of time. Um, and then oftentimes this is also a quarter when you're you know, drafting different sections of your thesis as you're able to write them. And then in spring, we will often ask students who want to, who if you're, you're working to finish by spring 2021, that, that's your goal, right, um, as of right now. Uh, we would really um, start to um, think about having a complete draft of your document by the beginning of spring, okay? Um, and uh, this is going to be uh, really important because then you have more time in spring to go through edits on your different sections. And, and this is also, you know, it's different for everybody because everybody's thesis is um, a 
um, uh, an independent uh, project that is separate from everybody else's thesis, right? So no, no two theses are alike. And, and that's a, a wonderful thing, but it does mean that there is a lot of variability in how each of you experience the timeline because you may have different hangups um, in data collection, for example, or analysis might take longer for some than others, right? Uh, qualitative analysis is um, something that takes quite a long time, right? Um, just as an example. So, um, but just note that spring does end up uh, being a quarter where you are doing a, a ton of writing and editing. And so if you can have at least a drafty draft of your, of your thesis document ready by the beginning of spring, that can be tremendously helpful. So just a little reminder that you want to finish all 72 credits of your MES um, degree in order for us to confer your degree. So the 16 thesis credits that you're working on are the final credits that you know you would be earning in the program. Unless of course you have some electives that you may uh, be picking up over the summer. So that can also uh, happen and that's totally fine. Um, so the uh, submitting your thesis section um, is important. Um, just uh, we have an MES thesis handbook and it has been updated uh, for our current, our current working environment, which is 100% remote um, at the time of this recording. Um, you will be able to uh, submit your document um, at the end of spring quarter 2021 to our program assistant. And you're gonna submit only digital copies this time around. We're no longer requiring students to submit hard copies anymore. So you're, digital copy will be used um, in library circulation, but only um, through the institutional repository, which is Evergreen's online archives, okay? Um, and then if you do want to print and bind uh, a copy of your thesis document, you're more than welcome to, but, um, and we can, we have a process for that, we can help you through it, um, but you do not need to print a copy for uh, our office. So that's just something that you'll do um, personally for your uh, personal use. Um, when we go through this thesis submission process, what you'll do is you'll submit your final PDF thesis document after it's been edited and, it, and it's perfect, but exactly the way you and your reader want it. You'll submit it and you'll CC your reader and then your reader is gonna uh, reply to that email with their written approval of your completed thesis document. And then that's how we're able to accept it at that point. So your reader does need to sign off, but they'll, they, they'll just use an electronic signature and the electronic signature is going to be their written consent sent from their evergreen uh, faculty email. At the bottom of this resources page, we have uh, actually just uh, a ton of, of uh, links to either web pages, uh, PDF documents, or Word documents. So it's not the it's not the prettiest thing to look at. So and we apologize if it looks a little listy, but this is as uh, straightforward and to the point as we can as we can make it. <laughs> so this is for um, at the top for thesis students who are currently, um, who have taken case studies and thesis design in the fall of 2020 and are pursuing credits, thesis credits in winter of 2021. So your MES thesis timeline for 2020-2021 is the guide you're gonna follow. Um, for students who um, are you know, still pursuing the thesis process um, and they maybe started in um, the fall of 2019 in case studies. This is going to be the document that they follow. So we update it every year and so um, every single um, cohort of thesis students has um, has the guidelines for, for their um, cohort at, um, at the time that they are starting the thesis process. So you're gonna be focusing up here if you are starting winter 2021. 
Um, you don't need to necessarily focus on the thesis prospectus um, at this point anymore. Um, this is not uh, something that you need to worry about. You are uh, uh, on thesis, the thesis track, so you've already completed a prospectus at this point, but they are there for you. Um, and then down here, we're gonna kind of take a look at the human subjects review really quick. Um, and I'm just gonna open this up in a new tab. So this is, this is important information uh, for individuals who are um, looking into um, working with uh, people, either for you know, interviews and sometimes uh, surveys. Um, you do need to complete the human subjects review process, okay? So a uh, human subjects review link is gonna take you to the IRB homepage. So this is an evergreen, um, an evergreen webpage. So this is a non-MES webpage. And uh, this is uh, information that helps you know, anybody at the college who wants to pursue um, working with people um, for um, you know, either qualitative analysis um, or interviews. So, um, and this is, um, this is important to complete before you uh, begin, you know, either sending out surveys or before you start interviews. So you definitely wanna consult with your, your faculty um, advisor, your thesis reader um, on this process. Um, and you wanna consult with them, you know, throughout the time that you're curating your methodology. Um, oftentimes they will ask you to do um, this uh, city training down here. So the training course that you're gonna want to pursue is um, for human subjects research and responsible conduct of research, which you know that can be optional, but again, you wanna consult with your faculty advisor about that. They have step-by-step -step instructions for logging into the city training and creating an account um, with your uh, evergreen student email um, and uh, updating and creating your user profile so that you can access the uh, particular curriculum that, you, um, that you're gonna need for approval to move forward with your research. Now, um, step seven, um, we, unfortunately, that yes, we already had um, a student who reached out to us and, and let us know that these questions aren't exact to the city um, training questionnaire that would allow you to get to the RCR training and human subjects modules, okay? Um, there are actually nine questions. And um, I think that for the most part, uh, most of these are spot on. And so if you, you just may need to actually scroll through and um, look at the questions themselves instead of um, looking at the question number. Now, um, if you have any issues as you're moving through um, step seven and answering these questions so that these training modules can be added to your city portal, um, definitely feel free to reach out. Um, I have a separate Word document with screenshots of um, the questions and how you'll want to answer them in order to get the um, in, or in order to get the trainings added to your portal. Um, so definitely, yes, feel free to reach out to um, either myself and also um, Karen Gall um, is is also available as um, a resource for um, these these training modules and your faculty. So your faculty advisor is also here to help you with. Um, these uh, processes as you move through the thesis. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna close that. And we're gonna go back to um, the thesis process page. So that's your, that's your human subjects review. Then um, your request to present thesis document, this is a PDF document that you complete for, uh, for thesis students pursuing credits um, in winter and spring 2021. This is what you'll complete in about um, the mid uh, the mid to three quarters of the way um, in spring of 2021. Okay, we're gonna start asking for this form. And we're asking you to consult with your reader at that time and determine if you are ready, if you will be ready to present your results and present your independent research project in a public presentation at the end of the quarter and that you will be ready to submit your 
final thesis document at the end of the quarter. If you are not ready to submit your thesis document um, or present your findings so that you wouldn't, you wouldn't be eligible to graduate at the end of spring 2021, then we're not going to ask you to um, submit a request to present. You are either presenting and finishing the same quarter or you are extending. So those are, those are your only two options, okay? We don't want you to present and then extend. So you want to present the same quarter that you are planning to submit your, your document. And then the thesis formatting uh, templates are um, the next couple of bullets on this page. The templates are very helpful for formatting your master thesis document. Um, we have two templates here. Um, the first template is for mirror margins. So this is going to be if you want to uh, have a bound copy of your thesis and you would like to print your thesis document so that the pages are printed on the front and back. And uh, this is important, the mirror margins and this, the formatting for this particular temp template is important because the binding process, what, what happens during the binding process is um, along the spine, so if you're looking at the document straight on, the left side of your spine is going to need to be 1.5 inches, and then the rest of your document will be one inches, okay, all the way around. Um, and this is because the binding process eats about half an inch of your the paper on your spine. So the mirror margin and the additional spacing along the spine will allow you to flip through your thesis like a book so that every time you open up a page, you have text on the left and the right side and your page numbers are located on the outside. So for a left adjusted page, it'll be located, um, your page numbers will be located on the left, the bottom left corner. For a right adjusted page, your page numbers will be located on the bottom right corner. Um, so the formatting template already has all of that information and all of those, those criteria um, uh, set up in the template. So you, you shouldn't have to do a lot of tinkering to get it to look um, uh, and, and match with our style guide that you will find in the thesis handbook. So this can be uh, very helpful. So definitely feel free to use this template and save your own copy down to your, um, your desktop when you're ready to start kind of building out your, your document. This um, thesis formatting template, which is just one inch margins, not for binding. So you don't wanna use this one for binding. You are welcome to use this one if you do not plan to bind um, your thesis document and you just want to submit your final document to our office uh, digitally. So this is, uh, you know, you are uh, a welcome um, formatting um, style. Um, it is standard. There are no additional spaces along the margins to allow for binding. So um, you know, feel free to um, use this one, um, especially um, uh, if you uh, want to save a copy to maybe you have a personal website or um, maybe you have a, a LinkedIn account um, and you want to have um, e-links um, to your thesis uh, document, maybe from the thesis archives um, that we'll upload it to. Um, this, this style uh, looks really nice um, as a PDF, um, and it's a very um, standard style, so there aren't any additional um, um, uh, spacings on, on the margins. So feel free to use this one. All the page numbers are going to be on the bottom right-hand side. Um, this is your thesis binding order form. So this is, gonna, this is the one that's modified for COVID-19 operations. Um, it is a Word document. This is the order form that you're going to want to use when you're ready to bind a copy of your thesis document um, and you want to work with uh, Phil's Custom Bindery up in Seattle, Washington. This is our, this is our, um, uh, our local 
um, vendor for our thesis binding needs. Um, and you'll also, you'll want to work with a Scott Gold Daughter up at Phil's Custom Bindery. So Scott knows our process, he knows the thesis binding order form, and he um, also has our style. So our, our style for the thesis, the MES thesis do, um, documents, which is gonna be hardback green with gold embossed letters on the front and on the spine. It's very pretty and it is in line with all of the other thesis documents that came before it that you know, we used to ask, well, we just some, some history, we used to ask um, students to print and bind a copy of their thesis document um, for the library, actually. So if you ever go into the archives um, in the, at the Evergreen State College, you'll find um, just hundreds of, um, of bound hard copy MES thesis documents. And um, they are all this uh, style convention, which is this green hardback with gold embossed letters. So um, he already has that in his system. You don't need to um, do anything other than some, fill out the thesis binding order form and calculate the total cost based off of the, um, the forms uh, guidelines that are, um, that are there. And, uh, and then print off your thesis documents and, and ship them with the order form to uh, Scott, or you can deliver them um, in person. He does uh, uh, contactless um, drop-offs. So uh, that's certainly an option for you. And if you have any questions, you know, definitely feel free to reach out to us. Um, this is our uh, thesis funding link. So for a lot of our, uh, a lot of our students who are, um, have uh, maybe some expenses, for the thesis research process, look up thesis funding opportunities. Um, there are a lot of funding resources for graduate students, especially performing independent research, um, and especially in environmental sciences and studies um, programs and, um, and fields. So um, feel free to check out the thesis funding page. We have internal and external funding resources available there, um, and, uh, and we're happy to help um, you know, work with you if you have questions about um, what, it, what you need to do in order to be reimbursed for funding, if you've applied for the thesis, um, uh, thesis fund um, application this month, um, we, can, we can certainly work with you on that. Um, and then uh, usually we have uh, MESA professional development funding. So this is another resource that you could potentially look into. Um, the uh, MESA um, club is um, currently uh, needing to reapply for funding in order to become eligible to provide PDF funding. So right now, PDF funding isn't necessarily um, uh, available at this time, but if it, if it could be this year, um, then uh, that's definitely something that you could look into. Um, and then we have uh, the final item that we recently added to this page is the thesis formatting step-by-step um, -step instructions Word document. So if you have any issues formatting your thesis document, if the template um, is, um, is, is challenging, if it's giving you a hard time, um, or if you're having to do it from scratch for whatever reason, then you can follow this thesis formatting step-by-step -step instructions Word document and um, it will tell you how to find and use all of the amazing features that Microsoft Word offers you as a user. So things like formatting your table of contents, um, inserting your page numbers with you know, Roman numerals and Arabic numbers on different sections, um, you know, creating your list of figures, creating your list of, um, of, list of tables. Um, these are all things that Word can do for you. You should not have to do them manually. So please don't do them manually. Um, and we also will have, we have YouTube videos on the website. Obviously you're watching um, one of the YouTube videos. So please, you know, feel free to check out the YouTube videos that will be posted on the, um, the thesis process um, playlist um, to also see, uh, you know, 
um, visual tutorials about how to go through that process. So you have it in writing and you also have um, a couple of us, um, you know, just going through the steps and, and explaining how to do it. Um, so, uh, but again, things happen. So the second, you know, you feel like you've been spending too much time and you just, and you just can't get that table of contents just right, um, please reach out to us and, and we would love to help troubleshoot with you, okay? So um, that's gonna be um, the majority of your, your thesis process um, webpage. Um, and then of course, many of you have seen this already. This is our um, MES academic calendar. Um, the academic calendar is, is a very important guide. It has a lot of important dates and deadlines. Um, and uh, so definitely feel free and please you know, reference this when you can. Um, you will need to register. Um, next quarter, so spring quarter 2021, for um, your thesis credits again. And uh, we will need to create those um, CRNs for you as thesis students so that you can register with your faculty reader um, for spring quarter. Um, and then um, also be sure to uh, apply to graduate. Um, you can do it as early as uh, this quarter so that you are ready to graduate in spring quarter uh, 2021. Um, if you're not sure what quarter you want to graduate, um, please reach out to us or what quarter you should be graduating, you know, please reach out to us and, and we can talk about your, um, your personal circumstances one-on-one. Um, -on -one. Um, and then uh, we hope to have um, graduation on uh, Friday. Uh, June 11th, 2021. So um, we'll put in a little plug for a save the date there. Um, and if that changes, we will definitely let you know. Um, but again, as, as far as we know, yeah, we're working remotely the rest of this academic year. So, um, you know, uh, email, Zoom, phone calls, um, that's going to be the best way to reach out to your um, MES uh, program support and your evergreen uh, student uh, services supports. So, uh, well, we're excited for all of you and we can't wait to see all of the incredible work that you um, that you move through in the following months. So welcome to Thesis Land and uh, of course reach out if you have any questions. <laughs>